learning objectives after studying this module students will be able to understand the basic nature of a joint stock company know the types of shares issued by a company know the different accounting treatments for shares issued at par premium or discount define subscribed capital understand the concept of four feature of shares learn the concept of reissue of forfeited shares learn how to prepare share forfeited account features of a company 1 what is a company as per companies act 1956 a company incorporated or registered under companies act or any other earlier companies act as per chief justice marshall a company is a person artificial invisible intangible and existing only in the eyes of law being a mere creation of law it possesses only those properties which the charter of its creation confers upon it either expressly or as incidental to its very existence features of a company the features of the company that makes it different from other organizations are as follows voluntary association those who want to form a company can come together voluntarily to carry on the business that is why it is called voluntary organization separate legal entity a company's legal entity is different from its members a company can hold and deal with any kind of property a company can do contracts and even open a bank account in its own name it can sue others and can be sued by others limited liability the members of the company is liable for the unpaid amount of the shares held by them if the company is limited by guarantee the liability of the members is limited to the guarantee given by them when the company is being wound up features of a company 2 perpetual succession the company continues to exist even if there is a change in the membership as we know that a company is an artificial person created by law the death or insanity or insolvency of any member of the company in no way affects the existence of the company members may come and go but the company continues common seal as we know that a company is an artificial person and cannot sign its name by itself so we need to have a seal that acts as official signatures of the company the document that does not contain the seal of the company is considered to be illegal transfer of shares the shares of a company which is public limited can be transferred easily we do not require any permission from the company or permission of any member of the company to transfer shares but the articles of the company can tell the manner in which the transfer of shares will be made may sue or be sued a company can enter into contracts and can take legal rights against the others in case of any breach of contract it can be sued or can sue by its name kinds of a company there are two ways to classify a company a on the basis of liability of its members b on the basis of the number of members kinds of a company on the basis of the liability of its members on the basis of the liability of its members a company can be divided into three categories companies limited by shares companies limited by guarantee and unlimited companies companies limited by shares in this case the liability of a member is limited to the extent of the nominal value of the shares held by the members suppose the member pays off the full amount of his shares then he is not liable to pay any amount to the company in spite of debts of the company he does not need to pay any amount from his private property companies limited by guarantee in this case 
the liability of its members is limited to the amount they decide to at the time of winding up of the company. Thus, the liability of the members will be only in the event of its winding up. Unlimited Companies The unlimited company is the company in which there is no limit on the liability of its members. In this case, if the company's property is not enough to pay off its debts, then the private property of the members can be used for this purpose. In other words, the creditors have the right to claim their dues from its members. Such companies are not found in India, even though permitted by the Companies Act 1956. Kinds of a company on the basis of number of members. On the basis of number of members, a company can be divided into two categories on the basis of number of members. Public company. A public company means a company which is not a private company, has minimum capital of 5 lakh rupees. On such higher paid up capital may be prescribed and is not a subsidiary of a private company. Private company. A private company is the company which has minimum paid up capital of 1 lakh rupees or such higher paid up capital as may be prescribed by its articles. It restricts the right of transfer of shares, must have at least two persons except in case of one person company limits the number of its members to 200 excluding employees. Don't let the public to subscribe for any shares in or debentures of the company. Don't accept deposits from a person other than its members, directors and relatives. One Person Company Under Section 262 of the Companies Act and OPC is a company which has only person as its member. Rule 3 of the company's incorporation rules 2014 provides that a. Only a natural person being an Indian citizen and resident in India can form one person company. b. It cannot carry out non-banking financial investment activities. c. Its paid-up share capital is not more than 50 lakh rupees. d. Its average annual turnover of 3 years does not exceed rupees 2 crores. Categories of share capital 1. In accounting, the share capital of the company can be divided into the following types. Authorized capital. This type of capital is the share capital which a company is authorized to issue by its memorandum of association. A company does not have the permission to raise the capital more than specified by memorandum of association. It is also called as nominal capital or registered capital. The nominal capital can be increased or decreased as per the procedure of the same mentioned in Companies Act. It is not necessary for the company to issue the whole authorized capital for public subscription at a time. In case of need, the company may issue share capital as per requirement, but it should not be more than the amount of authorized capital. Issued capital. It is the amount of capital which is actually issued to the public for subscription including the shares which are allotted to vendors and the signatories to the company's memorandum. The authorized capital for which public subscription is not invited is known as unissued capital. Unissued capital may be offered for public subscription at a later date. Subscribed capital The part of the authorized capital which is offered to public for subscription is called as subscribed capital. When the shares that are offered for public subscription are subscribed fully by the public, the issued capital and subscribed capital would be the same. In case the subscribed capital is higher, then it will not reflect in the books of accounts. Categories of Share Capital 2 
called up capital the part of the subscribed capital which has been called up on the shares is called called up capital it is company's wish to call upon the entire amount or part of the face value of the shares for example if the face value of a share allotted is 15 rupees and the company called up only 10 rupees per share then the called up capital would be 10 rupees per share and extra 5 rupees can be asked from the shareholders as and when it requires paid up capital the portion of the called up capital that a company actually receives from the shareholders is known as paid up capital if any of the shareholders have not paid amount on calls such an amount may be called as calls in arrears therefore paid up capital is equal to the called up capital minus call in arrears uncalled capital the portion of the subscribed capital which yet is to be called up is called as unsubscribed capital it can be collected by the company as and when required reserve capital a company at times reserves some amount of its uncalled capital to be called at the time of winding up of the company which is known as reserve or reserve capital it is available only for the creditors on winding up of the company nature and classes of shares what is a share share can be defined as a unit in which the total share capital of a company is divided the person who contributes money to the company through shares is called a shareholder as per section 86 of the companies act a company can issue two types of shares preference share equity shares preference shares as per section 85 of the companies act a preference share is one that fulfills the following conditions a it carries a preferential right to dividend before paying the dividend to equity shareholders b it carries a preferential right to get capital payment before any payment made to equity shareholders at the time of winding up of the company a holder of the preference shares has the right to participate in the surpluses of the company fully or to a limited extent as prescribed by memorandum of association these shares can be redeemable or irredeemable cumulative or non cumulative or participating or non participating equity shares According to section 85 of the Companies Act an equity share is one which is not a preference share the shares that don't have any preferential right of payment of dividend or repayment of capital are termed as equity shares the equity shareholders are entitled for the distributable profits of the company after giving the dividend to the preference shareholders the dividend which is given to equity shareholders may vary depending upon the amount of profits available for distribution steps in the procedure of share issue 1 the amount on a company's shares can be gradually collected in easy installments spread over a period of time depending upon the growing financial requirement of a company The first installment is collected while accepting the application and that's why known as application money. The second on allotment termed as allotment money and the remaining installment are termed as first call, second call and so on. The word final is suffixed to the last installment. Steps in the procedure of share issue. Issue of prospectus Prospectus is a way of giving information about the company to the public. Through prospectus, a company invites the public for investing 
and making them aware of the existence of the company. It provides complete information about the company and the way money is to be collected from the investors. Receipt of Applications When people are invited through prospectus, then the investors who are willing to subscribe the share capital of the company would make an application along with the application money and deposit the same with the scheduled bank as mentioned in the prospectus. The company should get the minimum subscriptions within 120 days from the date of issue of the prospectus. If the company fails to receive the same, the company cannot proceed for the allotment of shares and application money should be returned within 130 days of the date of issue of prospectus. Steps in the procedure of share issue 2. Allotment of shares In case of minimum subscription received, the company may go ahead for the allotment of shares after fulfilling certain other legal formalities. Letters of allotment will be given to those whom the shares have been allotted and letters of regret to those to whom no allotment has been made. When allotment is made, it generates a valid document between the company and the applicants who now become the shareholders of the company. Shares of a company can be issued at par or at premium price. When the issue price of share is exactly equal to their nominal value according to the terms and conditions of issue, then shares will be issued at par. When the shares of a company are issued more than its nominal value, face value, the excess amount is called premium. Accounting Treatment on Application The money paid as installments shows the contribution to share capital and should be credited to share capital. However, to avoid inconvenience, initially individual accounts are opened for each installment. All money received along with application is deposited with a scheduled bank in a separate account opened for the purpose. Accounting Treatment of Allotment When a company receives minimum subscription and certain legal formalities on the allotment of shares have been duly done, the directors of the company proceed to make the allotment of shares. The allotment of shares implies a contract between the company and the applicants who now become the allottees and have the status of shareholders or members. Journal Entries with regard to allotment of shares Journal Entries for allotment of shares 1. For transfer of application money 2. For money refunded on rejected application. 3. For amount due allotment. 4. For adjustment of excess application money. 5. For receipt of allotment money. Sometimes a combined account for share application and share allotment called Share Application and Allotment Account, is opened in the books of a company. When a combined account is maintained, journal entries are recorded in the following manner. 1. For receipt of application and allotment. 2. For transfer of application money and allotment amount due. 3. For money refunded on rejected application. 4. On receipt of allotment account. Accounting treatment for on calls. Calls play an important role in making shares fully paid up and for realizing the full amount of shares from the shareholders. If the shares are not fully called up till the completion of the allotment of shares, then the directors have the right to ask for the balance amount on shares as and when they decide about the same. 
two points should keep in mind regarding the call on shares. The amount on any call should not exceed 25% of the face value of shares. There must be an interval of at least one month between the makings of two calls unless otherwise provided by the Articles of Association of the Company. Journal Entries with Regard on Call Shares Journal Entries for On-Call Shares 1. For Call Amount Due 2. For Receipt of Call Amount Please note that the word first, second or third must be added between the words share and call in the share call account depending upon the identity of the call made. Suppose in case of first call, it should be written as share first call account, etc. Another point to be noted is that the words the and final will also be added to the last call. Say, if third call is the last call, it will be termed as third and final call. Call in arrears. When any shareholder is not able to make the payments due on allotment or any of the calls, then that amount will be treated as call in arrears or unpaid calls. If a company maintains accounts for call in arrears account, then the following entries would be made. The articles of association of a company may give the rights to the directors to charge interest at a stipulated rate on calls in arrears. If the articles does not say anything in this regard, then interest not exceeding 10% per annum shall have to be paid on all unpaid amounts on shares for the period intervening between the day fixed for payment and the time of actual payment made. When the shareholder makes the payment of calls in arrears together with interest. The entry will be as follows. Call in advance. At times, shareholders pay a part or the whole of the amount of the calls which are not made by the company. The amount which is received from the shareholders in advance is known as calls in advance. The amount received in advance is a liability of the company and should be credited to call in advance account. The amount received as call in advance will be adjusted towards the payment of calls when they become due. The journal entries for the calls in advance would be When the calls become due, then the entry would be done as follows. Calls in advance account is shown as a separate item under the title Equity and Liabilities in the Company's Balance Sheet under the head Current Liabilities under Other Current Liabilities. If mentioned in the articles, to pay interest on call in advance from the date of its receipt up to the date when appropriate call is due for payment. The entry would be done as follows. For payment of interest, for interest due, for interest paid, over subscription. At times, there are situations when applications for more shares of a company are received than the number of shares offered to the public to subscribe. Generally, it happens in the case of a well-established company or the companies which are financially strong and is called as a case of oversubscription. Oversubscription In case of oversubscriptions, three alternatives are available with the directors to deal with the situations. 1. They can accept some applications in full and reject other applications. In that case, the application money received on rejected applications may be fully refunded. The journal entries will be done as follows. 1. Money received on application. 2. 
transfer of application for money. 3. For amount due on allotment. 4. Allotment money received. 2. When the directors choose to make a called pro rata allotment. In this case, the excess application money received is adjusted against the amount due on allotment. In case, the excess application money received is more than the amount due on allotment of shares, such excess amount may either be refunded or credited to calls in advance. The journal entries in this case would be 1. For application money received 2. Transfer of application money to share capital and the excess application money on shares credited to share allotment account. 3. Amount due on allotment. 4. Allotment money received after adjustments. 3. When the application for some shares are rejected directly and pro rata allotment is made to the remaining applicants, the money on rejected applications is refunded and the excess application money received from applicants to whom pro rata allotment has been made is adjusted towards the amount due on the allotment of shares allotted. Under subscription Under subscription is that situation where number of shares applied for is less than the number for which applications have been invited for subscription. For example, a company offered 3 lakh shares for subscription to the public, but the applications were received for 2 lakh 90 thousand shares only. In such a situation, the allotment will be confirmed to 2 lakh 90 thousand shares and entries shall be made accordingly. Issue of shares at premium. Issue of shares at premium means issuing shares at the amount more than the par value. When a share of the nominal value of rupees 100 is issued at rupees 115, it is said to have been issued at a premium of 15%. When the company issues share at premium, then it can call the premium amount at any point. The amount of premium is credited to a separate account called Securities Premium Account and is shown under the title Equity and Liabilities of the company's balance sheet under the head Reserves and Surpluses. Purpose for which premium can be utilized. A. To issue fully paid bonus shares, not more than unissued share capital. B. To write off preliminary expenses of the company. C. To write off expenses like commission paid, discount allowed, etc. D. To pay premium on the redemption of preference shares. E. To purchase own shares. For premium amount called up with application money, premium amount called with allotment money, premium amount called with call money. Issue of shares at discount. There are many situations when a company issues shares at a discount means amount less than the par value of share. Suppose a 120 rupees share of company is issued at a price of rupees 100. A company cannot normally issue share at discount. It can only issue shares on discount in the case of reissue of forfeited shares. Issue of shares for consideration other than cash. There are cases when a company makes an arrangement with the vendors from whom it has purchased assets in which the vendor accepts the payment in the form of fully paid shares of the company issued to them. Normally, no such cash is received for issue of shares. These shares can also be issued either at par, at premium or at discount. 
and the number of shares to be issued will depend upon the price at which the shares are issued and the amount payable to the vendor. The formula to calculate the number of shares that are issued to vendor is given here. For feature of shares, at times it happens that some of the shareholders fails to pay installment money or call money. In that cases, a company can forfeit their shares, which means company can cancel their allotment. When shares are forfeited, all entries relating to the shares forfeited, except those relating to premium already recorded in the accounting records, must be reversed. Four feet of shares. Journal entry for four feature of shares. Four feet of shares issued at par. It may be noted here that when the shares are forfeited, all entries relating to the forfeited shares will be reversed except the entry relating to share premium received. Four feature of shares issued at premium. If shares are issued at premium and the amount of premium is realized fully, but some shares are forfeited because of non-payment of call money, then the accounting treatment will remain the same as we do when shares are issued at par. The securities premium account is not to be debited at the time of forfeiture if the premium has been received in respect of the forfeited shares and the amount of forfeiture shall be excluding premium amount. If the premium amount is not received for forfeited shares, then the securities premium reserve account will also be debited with the amount of premium not received along with the share capital account at the time to forfeiture. The journal entries would be done as follows. Reissue of forfeited shares. Forfeited shares may be reissued as fully paid at a par, premium and discount. But it may be noted that the amount of discount cannot allowed more than the amount received at the time of issue of shares and the discount allowed on reissue of forfeited shares should be debited to the forfeited share account. The balance, if any, left in the share forfeited account relating to reissued shares should be treated as capital profit and transferred to capital reserve account. The journal entry would be Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. A company is a person, artificial, invisible, intangible and existing only in the eyes of law. Being a mere creation of law, it possesses only those properties which the charter of its creation confers upon it, either expressly or as incidental to its very existence. The members of the company are liable for the unpaid amount of the shares held by them. The death or insanity or insolvency of any member of the company in no way affects the existence of the company. A company can enter into contracts and can take legal rights against the others in case of any breach of contract. The unlimited company is the company in which there is no limit on the liability of its members. On the basis of the number of members, company can be divided into a public company and private company. Under Section 262 of the Companies Act, an OPC is a company which has the only person as its member. Issued capital is the amount of capital which is actually issued to the public for subscription, including the shares which are allotted to vendors and the signatories to the company's memorandum. The part of the authorized capital which is offered to the public for subscription is called as subscribed capital. The part of the subscribed capital which has been called upon the shares is called as 
called up capital. A prospectus is a way of giving information about the company to the public. When the issue price of a share is exactly equal to their nominal value according to the terms and conditions of an issue, then shares will be issued at par. When the shares of a company are issued more than its nominal value, face value, the excess amount is called premium. When any shareholder is not able to make the payments due on allotment or any of the calls, then that amount will be treated as call in arrears or unpaid calls. The amount which is received from the shareholders in advance is known as calls in advance.